What is the scummiest thing a teacher has ever done to you? Third grade teacher threw several parties during the year. Sent a note home telling everyone what to bring in. Then later would say there wasn't time, or we didn't deserve the party, and take all the stuff home with her. It was many years, before I realized how wrong that was. 10th grade science class. Teacher poses a question in lecture, a species of bird always eats dirt from a specific cliff prior to eating the fruit of a type of tree, why? A couple students gave answers about roughage and flavor. I says that there may be a chemical in the dirt which offsets a poison in the fruit. I was told to get out to the hallway. Teacher comes out demanding to know who told me. That question was not supposed to be answerable I suppose. He had planned to spend a couple classes on the subject, before revealing the answer, and how the scientists arrived at it. He tried to get me suspended. Given the element mentioned it seemed the only logical conclusion. This was one of the contributing factors to me hating school. 7th grade math test, had to solve for x. Throughout the equation, the x was on the right side, but when I finally solved for x, I moved it to the left to make it say x equals 5, because it just sounds better and that's the normal way to assign variables. She marked it wrong, because she wanted me to keep the variable on the same side of the equation the whole way through, which means she wanted 5 equals x. TL, doctor, x equals 5 is not the same as 5 equals x. Had the same 8th grade math teacher as my older brother. My older brother was a fairly notorious prankster and this teacher was the subject of many of his most notorious pranks. The two most notorious involved removing all of the screws from her desk and balancing it back together. And the big one, they used some sort of varnish slash shellac on her chair that adhered her skirt to the chair resulting in her losing her skirt in class. Anyway, fast forward 4 years, and I'm about to wrap the semester, when my brother comes, and picks me up from school. The next day the teacher asks, if that dude is my brother. I get my report card and find, that after 2 6 week periods of a grades, I now have an F, that I can't explain. I keep trying to tell my parents, that something is going on, but I end up with 2 more F grades. Finally, the last 6 week period, the teacher has a nervous breakdown and leaves the school. My parents get called into the school, where the principal tells us that I had no grades recorded in the gradebook since the second 6 weeks. They fought it, but in the end the school couldn't do anything about it, resulting in me failing 8th grade math. I took summer school to try and make it up, but ended up taking basic math in 9th grade. To try and catch back up. I skipped geometry to rejoin my classmates. Get to my senior year, and find out 5 weeks, in that I wasn't going to graduate, because geometry was mandatory, and taking trigonometry didn't count. Had to drop out of calculus 2 to take geometry in order to graduate. TL, doctor failed 8th grade math, because the teacher hated my brother. Almost caused me, to not graduate high school. I spent a year living with my grandmother. I was tested, and put in a gifted and talented program where I attended a regular school half of the month and my GT class the other half. While my GT class was writing a book on the Russian settlement of Alaska, I missed my regular school long division exercise. Then there was a family crisis, and I had to move back in with my parents in another state. My new math teacher refused to teach me. She said I should not have been wasting my time taking stupid classes, and since I didn't care to learn. She would not teach me. My step aunt was her BFF, and told her to keep a close eye on me, because I was a sicko pervert who looked at dirty pictures. She went through my book bag, and saw a book on Roman sculpture. For the rest of the year I was branded a stupid, perverted troublemaker. I was only 10, and I didn't understand what I did wrong. That pretty much set the tone for the rest of my school years. I went from a very overachieving kid to one who baffled teachers, because I was such an underachiever despite the potential I showed. I made a tornado chamber in my freshman year of high school for a project. It was by far the best in class demonstration anyone had made, and was fun to play with. I left it in a media room for my teacher, to use to demonstrate and gave me full credit for building it. After he was done using it, he told me I could take it home, but it was stolen by another teacher, before I could take it home. 
the teacher rubbed my marked name off of it and used it in her class taking full credit for something she built. I eventually got it back, but the other teacher clung to her lie and insisted it was hers. Drafting teacher hated me, picked on me, pointed me out regularly, derided me, not appreciably, but it was obvious to everyone in the class that I was the one he wished wasn't there. Finally, about three quarters through the school year he finally asked me what he'd been wanting to ask me the whole time. Why are you taking drafting in the first place? You just want to be a professional violinist. I was dumbstruck. I played violin and stand-up bass, but I wasn't fooled into believing I could ever be a professional at either. When I asked him where he got that idea he told me that I'd said so on the questionnaire he passed out at the start of the year. I told him I'd never said such a thing and that he should reread the form. He puffed up, yelled something about how he'd do just that. He stomped into his office, jerked open his filing cabinet, pulled out a paper and read it for a moment. He then slammed his office door and we didn't see him for the rest of class. I won. I failed a paper because the teacher told me my opinion was wrong. We were doing an essay on Stalin and authoritarianism and I decided to try to defend authoritarianism for a challenge, and while the resultant paper was not the best, it deserved to pass. When I talked to my teacher about the grade, she told me that I couldn't morally justify authoritarianism in any way, no matter what justifications I had used, economic social, etc. And therefore my opinion was wrong. I couldn't do anything about it either, as she was the department head for that subject in my school. Took a class called industrial arts in junior high. We built birdhouses, wired simple electrical systems, etc. Male teacher calls me out on the first day, points to me, and tells the class that I don't belong there because I'm female, blonde, and left-handed, gives me a D on all my projects just because, and made fun of me daily. Upside, I learned not to take that crap, and had the principal walk with me to his office to review the grade, changed to a B. Senior English teacher. This woman was a notorious witch, and I didn't even need to take the class, I just wanted to because it was Shakespeare. We had to write a massive research paper on one of his plays. This was probably the longest paper I had to write in high school, about 30 pages. So I slaved away for weeks, and I made sure my citations were perfect. Our school was anal about that. I came up with a pretty cool analysis of Othello, or at least I thought. Knowing how this woman graded, I felt very confident that I could pull of a B. She refused to give A's. I hand in the paper, proud. I get the paper back, and it's an F. In a rage I pull her aside, and give her the WTF. She says that I plagiarized. I said I did no such thing. She then claims there isn't a citation after every single sentence. To which I reply, how do I cite my own ideas? She said as a high school student I wasn't qualified to make those assertions, and so I most certainly plagiarize the whole thing. If my only source was Othello, and the four acquired sources, who I used to back up my analysis, who I cited correctly, how in the hell am I plagiarizing? I tried to have the English department. Chair read the paper. She said the paper was very good, but she couldn't force the witch to change the grade. The witch said I was lucky she didn't have me suspended or expelled. This was pre-Google, so I didn't have any way to prove that these words were in fact my own, and that I wasn't stealing an idea. I was livid. That was scummy, and instead of encouraging someone to think for themselves you punish them severely for trying? I'm going to recount the story that my 9th grade algebra teacher told us once. He said this ended up being one of the defining moments that made him want to become a good teacher. He was an amazing teacher truth be told. When he was in early elementary school he was coloring a penguin. He liked to take his time with his coloring and decided that he would make a purple penguin. He began coloring it in with tiny circles that put together would end up with a neat pattern once he was finished. His teacher came over to him and asked him why he was coloring so slowly. He just kept at his penguin and ignored her. A few moments later the teacher came back and decided he needed help with his penguin because he wasn't finished yet. She grabbed a black crayon and just scribbled all over the, the penguin really quickly for him, annoyed that he wasn't finished yet. The teacher then stared at him expecting a thanks and gave him a smile like she just did him a great favor. He just stared dumb believing at this teacher ruining his work and started crying. 
he says that one encounter has shaped the way he interacts with his students, and he will never forget that incident as long as he lives. Sometimes the scummiest thing you can do to a kid seems like the most insignificant thing to an adult. Remember that when dealing with children. 8th grade math teacher accused, and then charged, and brought to court, me and a friend with assault and battery with intent to harm or kill, because we sprayed, non-toxic, Windex into a styrofoam cup that held the board markers. Apparently we were trying to kill her. We had to go to court and everything. Got suspended etc, and dealt with the stigma as the girls who tried to kill the teacher for the rest of our years in that town. Luckily, the judge thought it was insane, and dismissed it immediately, since there was no evidence. 8th grade, sadistic Matherfica would mess with me to test my limits every class. Would call me out in front of the class on the smallest things, made sure I knew he hated me, and would humiliate me whenever he could. Nice nail polish, miss. Maybe if you were studying instead of doing your nails you wouldn't be failing this class. Had a presentation on a country, went to the embassy to collect data, cooked the country's typical food, made sure I gave the best presentation ever in history, so he wouldn't be able to complain, while the other guy in my group, pasted some pages of the encyclopedia on his poster, with glue coming out on the sides. Total shitty work. Grade time. He decided to say the grades out loud, not before making a speech on how he won't change the grades, and that no one should bother questioning them. Encyclopedia guy gets a 98% and I get a 56%. I burst into tears. He starts laughing out loud. In front of the whole class. Someone is sensitive today. Don't worry, you still have one more presentation to go. Maybe you can do better next time and there will be no need for tears. Parents were involved. I hated eating meat growing up, but at lunch you weren't allowed to go outside until you finished your whole plate. In order to get to go to recess I trade all of my meat dish. Honestly have no idea what it was, for other students fries or potatoes. On one particular day I had a really good haul, and my plate was full of everyone's fries. I went to the counter, and got a bunch of salt, and poured it all over my fries. While doing so the mean teacher came over, and said hey you want to die of a heart attack by the time you're 30? To which I replied we all got to die one day at which point he whacked me in the back of the head really hard as I clutched a solitary fry in my hand. Everyone got quiet, and eventually went to recess. I sat at the table crying, was unable to finish the fries, and couldn't go to recess. This was back in 1988 or so, I imagine it probably wouldn't happen today, or would probably result in a ridiculous lawsuit. My high school art teacher pretty much stated outright in front of the class, that males are incapable of creating great art, and that she would never give an 80% or higher grade to any male in the class. Thank goodness she was only there for half the semester, with the other half being a tech slash design class taught by a different person. In sophomore year, I had a very narcissistic, degrading, and condescending Jiaoshan's teacher. Every single day he made everybody's lives hell by yelling at us, not even teaching, and only assigning book work, and telling everyone how we are going to fail in life, if we can't even succeed in his class. I tried to get out several times. After many meetings with both the counselor, principal, vice principals, and him, I never got out. I was stuck in that room all year. I was tolerant up until one day in particular. He told me, you know, with the grades you have you're never going to amount to anything in life. Mind you, I was an average student. A few A's and B's lowest grade I had was a C, in his class. I responded with, oh really? So you're telling me that with the grades I get I'm going to end up like you? Thanks for the motivation. Totally worth the 3 day suspension and lecture from him I got afterwards. Sorry for the wall of text. 11th grade English class. First day of teaching the crucible. Walk into class and the teacher has the head of discipline in her room with her, and before she starts class she says she has something serious to talk to us about. Apparently a large amount of money was stolen out of her desk the day before. She also had some sort of treasurer job in the administration, and asked the class if they had any info as to who stole the money. One of my classmates who I thought I was friendly with raised her hand, and said she saw Bonifier a car lapse and Ken my best friend in school, hanging out outside her classroom after school, and that Ken may have gone into the classroom. Then another student raised their hand, and said she heard us talking about being able to afford some big purchase now. 
so now my head is spinning, and I'm starting to have a panic attack, because both of these allegations are completely false. I was very quiet in high school, and stayed out of trouble. I try defending myself, but my voice starts cracking, because I'm so nervous. Then a few of my other classmates start raising their hands, and adding to the story about how they see us hanging out together all the time and we are close friends blah blah blah. So the head of the cycle starts leading us out of class, until we get to the door and the teacher tells us to come back in, and sit at our desks. Apparently the teacher pulled the first two kids aside before school this morning, and told them to accuse us of stealing, so that she could teach the class a lesson about the hysteria surrounding the Salem witch trial. The other kids were just making stuff up. By this point I'm in a cold sweat, and terrified that I'm getting kicked out of school, just so she can prove a point. I'm now married to a high school English teacher who teaches the crucible, and I've told her this story, and asked that she please never use this example. TL. Doctor teacher recreated the Salem witch trials and I almost shit my pants. We had a music theory test in band. Yes, we had tests in band. The day after the test, we all went to our cubbies where we normally receive sheet music, to get our tests back. Everyone's except mine was there. Everyone did terribly. I notice a band teacher with a test in his hand. He proceeds to tell the class that we all did horribly, except me, and since I was able to do the test, there would be no grading curve. Thanks for stabbing me in the back asshole. In 6th grade I was in Catholic school. During religion class we were having a discussion about the Passion of the Christ which came out the year prior. Everyone was praising the movie, so I raised my hand and said, Mrs. Mahoney I didn't like Passion of the Christ she was in shock, and asked why I didn't like it. I responded, the film relied too heavily on the violence. She was so offended, that she gave me silent lunch, so I could think about why Mel Gibson made that film in the first place. Basically, I got punished for having a negative opinion on a 2 hour, snuff film about Jesus Christ, 